Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. As you're joining in, you can share this broadcast. Say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. Now let's get straight into this teaching because I'm dealing with something amazing and this will really change your life. There's a supernatural power in what I'm talking about here. In Ephesians chapter three, verse seven, Apostle Paul was saying that whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God by the effectual working of his power. That's Ephesians chapter three, verse seven. Now, when Apostle Paul was talking about being made a minister according to the effectual working of the power of the Lord Jesus, that effectual power, it is the reason why you're able to come out of sin, think a new thought, have a new emotion, have a new word system, have a new um, life, new health, new finances, because it is in this effectual power. Now, one thing that I want you to see is how the gift of the grace of God and power works together. So the gift of the grace of God, the grace is really effectual power at work inside of you. So now we know why Romans 6, 14 says that sin shall not have dominion over you. You're not under law, you're under grace. Then Romans 6, 15 says, what then? Shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Because the grace is actually effectual power working in you. And this effectual power is greater than sin. The effectual power of God is greater than sickness. The effectual power of God is greater than poverty and financial troubles. The, 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 this effectual power that's in the grace of God could make you into anything that you're not. So if you lack boldness, the effectual power in the gift of the grace of God will make you a bold person. If you lack joy, the effectual power in the grace of God will supply joy. The effectual power in the grace of God takes you out of Satan's manipulation to stay in conditions that are cursed. So saints, it was the effectual working of power that is now being transferred to Timothy through Apostle Paul. That's why he's telling him to be an example, to not be afraid, be strong in the grace, because being strong in the grace is really tapping into the effectual power that makes you have mental courage that when people persecute you, Timothy, it will not affect you and make you stop doing what the spirit is having you do. And Timothy, when you experience opposition or criticism, the effectual power that's inside of this grace that I'm giving you, you're going to be strong in it. And so it will not tamper with your faith, your focus, your perseverance, your diligence, your keep going forward. Saints, this is amazing because Ephesians 3, 7 says that whereof I was made a minister by the, according to the gift of the grace of God. So the grace of God is a gift. Why is it a gift? Because it's something that you yourself was disqualified from, but God said, I feel like you should have it because I know how to qualify you. I know how to empower you. I know you're weak, but I know how to strengthen you. I know you're foolish, but I know how to make you wise. I know you're darkness, but I know how to make you light. Saints, I want to say this to you, that the grace of God was at work in Genesis. 
where he said, let there be light. This was an activity of the effectual power that's working in the grace of God. When he said, let us make man in our image, that's the grace of God displaying effectual power. Now, saints, what I want you to catch in that Ephesians 3, 7, it says that the effectual power. So that means that the power of God has effects. In medicine, there's something called side effects. That means that when you take the medicine, you may feel drowsy. If it's Benadryl, make you drowsy. Certain medicines, when you take it, it has side effects. That means that this is going to occur only because you took the medicine. Well, same with the power of God. When you receive the power of God, there are some effects that happen. And you need to know the side effects of power. The side effect of power is inspiration, perseverance, determination, purity of heart, and humbleness of mind. These are all the symbols that happen with the effectual working of the power of God. When the power of God is in you, on you, around you, there is a desire to start praising God. There's a desire to start pursuing God, calling upon his name, looking for his manifestation, calling those things that be not as though they were. One of the side effects of the effectual working of his power is faith, hope, love. These are all graces that move with that effectual working of his power. The power of God It stirs you to sanctify yourself from any person that's not a part of the divine schedule, the divine plan of heaven. Saints, it is by the effectual working of power that parents learn to raise children, that children learn to submit to parents, that wives learn to submit to husbands, that husbands learn to love wives. It is by the supernatural gift of the grace of God and this effectual working of power that a pastor could shepherd sheep and sheep could listen to the voice of the pastor. It's by the effectual power that a prophet prophesies. An apostle reveals the divine government of heaven. A teacher can explain the word of God with clarity. An evangelist can win souls. I think that's Proverbs chapter 11. I want to say verse 29 through 30. Maybe wrong. <laughs> but it says he that wins souls is wise. Evangelistic anointed. But that's all the effectual working of God's power, the gift of the grace of God that allows you to converse with someone about King Jesus and allow the interests of who King Jesus is to become magnified within their souls, that they will want to leave sin and cling to this newness of life that's given to you by the Holy Ghost. It is by the effectual working of power. Ephesians 3, 7, whereof I was made a minister. Whereof I was made a minister by the gift of the grace of God, by the gift of the grace of God. I was made a minister by the gift of the grace of God. I was made a minister. I wasn't a minister, but I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. It was a gift. It was a grace that God gave him that caused him to become something that he originally wasn't, to cause him to do things that he originally couldn't do, to cause him to say things that he originally couldn't say. He was able to minister not only to people, but to minister to the Holy Ghost because of this grace. There's a grace that God gives you to minister minister to him. Samuel in the word of God had a grace to minister to God as a little boy. He had Eli teaching him how that grace works. Then he, and remember Eli said, say, speak Lord for your servant is listening. That's Eli showing him how to move in that grace. You will always have an Eli 
that teaches you how to move in the grace that has been given to you as a gift. Never despise your Eli. A lot of people have bad things to say about Eli. We know Eli didn't rebuke his children. We know Eli was wicked, but I want you to look at the aspect that God trusted this Eli in the life of this little boy because Eli had once operated in this grace to minister to God. He wasn't doing it no more. Sadfully, sorrowfully. There's a grace for consistency. Never run from it. There's a grace to keep on doing what you were taught to do. If we look at Eli, he betrayed the grace. Grace can be betrayed. But he knew the laws of grace. How did he tell Eli? I mean, how did he tell uh, Sam Samuel? Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. How did he know it was the voice of God? Because Eli was a prophet. Saints, a lot of people don't really understand. A priest is a prophet. A priest is a prophet. You're not hearing me. A priest is a prophet. Do you understand what the job of the priest was to go as the middleman to God on the behalf of the people's sins, which is the same thing Moses did, which is the same thing Joshua did, which is the same thing Eli, uh, Elijah did, which is the same thing that Zacharias did. If you remember in Luke chapter one, Zachariah, what, that was his name, Zachariah, uh, Elizabeth's husband, he's seen an angel, Gabriel, talk to him and tell him, you're going to have a son. Huh? So what's going on here? This is a prophetic encounter because an angel is talking to this man. Zacharias is a prophet. He's a priest. He's a prophet. He's a priest. He's a prophet. Now watch this, people of God. Zacharias, Luke chapter 1. If you notice that when someone is a prophet, if they step out of that prophet's place and they operate in foolishness, the angel always does something to them. Let me give you an example. The angel did something to... Balaam, the angel did something to uh, David. Remember when he numbered the army, the death angel went out. You see, and started killing the people. The angel did something to Zacharias. Remember, he became mute. He couldn't talk. So in the word of God, you see that the priest is really the prophet. And that's why God's level of judging them is at a severe capacity because of the grace that's given to them as a priest and a prophet. You see what I'm saying? In your life, God will proclaim that you are something and you are not functioning as that. You see what I'm saying? Because what you have to understand is your flesh is keeping you from that function. But if you would yield to the gift of the grace of God, my Ramanda, 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 Randa, Ramanda, Ramanda. If you let the effectual power work in you, you could step into that which God has said, and you could do what God has said with complete perfection. But if you choose to be so, to remain in the flesh, the declaration of what God has spoken about you will just be a declaration, not a demonstration. 
How do you get into the gift of the grace of God and allow that effectual power that's in that gift of the grace of God to work in you? All through decision. The reason why God gave you a soul so that you could willfully take what he said. God gave you your soul so that you could intentionally grab what he has prophesied. Your soul is so that you could achieve the functionality of what was promised. Glory to God. You should really watch the replay and get those definitions. You should really watch that replay and get that definition. And say, says, I'm teaching you, there's an anointing right now to set you free from sin. There's an anointing right now. As I'm teaching you, there's an anointing right now to set you free from sin. This anointing is so that your soulish man could achieve the riches of God, the blessing of God, the power of God, the healing of God, the wealth of God, the strength of God, the joy of God, the Father himself living fully in your members. Ephesians chapter three, verse 14 says, for this cause, I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 15, it says, of whom all the family, the whole family of heaven and earth is named. You know what that means? That means that the great God Jehovah has his name stamped on everybody. That calls on King Jesus, receives King Jesus and say, you are my Lord. Tell me what to do from now on. Govern my life by your Holy Ghost. Tell me what you want me to do. Whatever you say is not your will, I will stop it. I will eradicate it. I will betray it. Whatever you want from me, I will give it to you. It doesn't matter. Verse 15 is an eye-opening text because it says, of whom all the, the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Now, why did the father do this? That give you the revelation of Adam. The woman, Genesis 5, Genesis uh. Uh, two, three, Genesis five, she was named Adam. Why was she named Adam? Because that was God's intent to place a name that carries power over the whole human race. But if you look at Ephesians 3.15, now it's saying that the father, Ephesians 3.14, 3.15, it says, I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom, verse 15, all the families of of the earth, the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. So the great God Jehovah has his name on you. Now, mind you, the great God Jehovah doesn't sin. The great God Jehovah is not tempted by evil. So saints, all throughout your life, you have to step back in his name. Shelemon de Livio. If you learn how to step back into his name all throughout your life, when you feel fear, you have to step back into his name. When you feel worried, step back into his name. When you feel bitter, step back into his name. When you feel bitter, uh, unforgiving, strife, jealousy, envy. When you feel weak, step back into his name because his name is where the grace is and the effectual power can work in you without any blockage, limitation, hindrance, or barrier. Think about that. The great God Jehovah's name is on you. The great God Jehovah's name is on you. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ, his name is upon you. Makaranda, Rebeko Somo. So the next time you want to have a nervous breakdown, the great God Jehovah don't have nervous breakdowns. The name of the great God Jehovah is on you. The next time you say, I can't stop thinking this thought. I don't know how to stop thinking. The name of the great God Jehovah is upon you. Rabba Sondolomosa. 
Rebe sotolomo. The next time you're talking about, I don't know how to control my feeling. I don't know how to control my feeling. The name of the great God Jehovah is on you. The one that is spirit and not flesh. The one that is in control of all of his decisions. He is holy. That means that he's in the overflow of wholeness. Why does the angels, Isaiah chapter 6, why do they stand around them? The seraphim say that holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The whole earth is full of your glory. Why do they talk in that manner? You know why? Because his name is holy. He's holy. That means that he's in the overflow of wholeness. So how, if you got the great God Jehovah name on you and he's holy, how could you act like you're broken and you're not whole and you're mentally sick, you physically sick, you're emotionally sick? What I'm saying to you, how could you receive that? I'm not saying it's not going to come your way. It will come your way. It's going to come your way. If you walk by the spirit, you're going to have a door to become emotionally sick. Because people are going to do you wrong. That's why King Jesus said, pray for those that despitefully use you. You telling me, Jesus, that I'm supposed to pray that they get blessed? No, no, no. The whole purpose of you praying for those that despitefully use you so that you don't enter into the door of sickness. Because your heart will become sick when you think about them despitefully using you. So when you pray for them, you're receiving the gift of the grace of God, the effectual working of power so that you won't plant yourself in bitterness. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 to bless those that curse you, bless and don't curse. Why would you bless those that's cursing you? That is how the effectual power works in you. That's how the gift of the grace of God could now supply your soul with what is needed so that you don't end up fighting someone and leaving your office, your operation for the father to try to cater to what you're feeling. You bless so that you can shift your mind into the direction of love instead of hate. So we in Ephesians 3, 14, 3, 15. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 14, verse 15, of whom all the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Verse 16 says that he would grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Look what it said right there. Look what it said right there. It says that he would grant unto you according to the riches of his glory. See, his glory is rich. That means that it's plenteous. Saints, I want you to think about this. The glory of God, the manifest presence of God is rich. That means that it can be supplied to any area where demonic presence is combating you. And there's a wealth of it. And so it could override, drown out, saturate any part where Satan is saying, I got you. The glory is so rich that no wonder the word of God said in Isaiah, when the enemy comes at you like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise the standard. The spirit of the Lord is raising the standard because the glory is rich. His manifested person, presence, character will override every part of your life 
where there is lack, there's demons, there's darkness, there's damage, there's devastation, there's destruction, there's decline, there's death. Look what it says right here in verse 16, Ephesians chapter three, verse 16 is that he will grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Everybody on here say happy new year. I want everybody on here right now. Write me happy new year. There's glory as you go. As you write happy new year, there's glory power going to hit your soul. Watch this. Watch this. I want everybody on here. Write me right now. Happy new year. And when you write that, you're going to feel the life of God explode in your soul. Watch. Watch. I need everybody right now. Right now. That's what the father just told me to tell you. If you write on this line, happy new year, his glory power is going to fill your soul. You're going to feel the oxygen of God, the life of God, the joy of God, the power of God, the effectual working of his power will fill your soul as you saying happy new year. And remember what I told you, the effectual working of his power, the effects of his power is inspiration in the mind, determination, strength. Courage, continuance, Makaranda Ramasa. Natasha, bless you for your three thousand dollar seed. That's powerful. Thank you so much for blessing me on my birthday. Those of you all, thank you so much for blessing me on my birthday. All of you all, thank you for the gifts. Those of you all, we in a new portal with the Holy Ghost right now. As you're writing me, Happy New Year. This is rising, that glory of the Father within you. Oh, I praise you, Lord. 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 I want to pray a special blessing on all my partners. All of you all that so into me. You share my videos. You help me out. All of you all across the world. I pray the blessing of the Father upon you right now. I release glory power into your life and I command the blessing on the work of your hands. I command the blessing on your seeds. I release the authority from my office upon your seed that the prophet's reward will restore everything unto you, that you're living the hundredfold. I prophesy over you that your well will not run dry. I prophesy over you new wells of provision, blessing, favor with God and with men. I prophesy over you deliverance from all evil. I prophesy over you health in your body. I prophesy over you strength in your mind, brand new relationships that are in the glory of God. I prophesy to you a fresh fear of God, wisdom in your decisions, humility in your heart, purity in your motives. I prophesy over you right now that angels will work in your life in an intense manner without any interruption, that you will stay in the word, continue in the word, abide in the word, and you will complete every instruction that God will give unto you with an excellent spirit. I prophesy deliverance in your attitude that impatience, anxiety, offenses, jealousy, envy be destroyed in you now in the name of King Jesus. Ephesians 3, 16 says that he will grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. See, it's the Holy Ghost that's strengthening you with might. See, the Holy Ghost will give you mightiness. Wow, wow, wow. It's the Holy Ghost that makes you mighty. That you will be strengthened with might, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So saints, your inner man, the man that's inside of you, your spirit, God is saying, 
I'm going to use the Holy Ghost, which is my spirit, to strengthen that inner man with might so that the mightiness of God would live in you at all times. Now, when the mightiness of God is living on the inside of you, you know what happens? You're no longer a slave to temptation. You could moderate what you're going to do. You could choose who you're going to react to. You could choose who you allow in your company. You could choose who you're going to let bother you, what you're going to let bother you, what you're going to let your focus be. You could choose it because the mightiness of God is on the inside of you. It says that you're going to be strengthened with might by the Holy Ghost. That's why you welcome, you live, you move, you have your being in the Holy Ghost because that's where you're going to have mightiness springing up in you. And when you resti karanda ramaso, rabaka, when you welcome the Holy Ghost, Limasata, Rabasondo, Rebekista Palamasorodos, Izo, Rivava, Rivalaba Korovos. If the Holy Ghost is welcomed by you, he starts supplying you his might, his charge, his boldness, his power, his dominion. He starts supplying it and giving it to you. He start releasing it to you. And you know what begins to happen? You start operating with the mindset of the great God Jehovah. The great God Jehovah mindset. The great God Jehovah mindset. The reason why Jesus is doing miracles because he has the great God Jehovah mindset. God is in human flesh, but the human flesh is saturated with the great God Jehovah mindset. So, 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 uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus, where he's anointing Jesus. Psalm 23 said that he anoint my hair with oil. So where's the, where does the anointing go? It goes to the head. It goes to the mind. It's a mindset. So, soto, talaba, and there's power moving on here as I'm talking to you right now. There's glory moving right on here as I'm talking to you. This glory power moving on this line. While you're listening to my words, there is a surge of Holy Ghost power moving into your soul. Holy Ghost power moving into your heart. Holy Ghost power moving into your being. This the grace of God, his effectual working of his power that comes on the inside of you. This is the grace. This is the power. This is the mightiness of God. This is the same strength that Samson had to lift up the gates, the bars for him to break off the chains that they placed on his hands this was the same glory power this the effectual working of God's power, the resurrection power of the Lamb of God that's on this line for you to come out, for you to receive for you to be glorified the same glory that you have given to me, I have given to them, John chapter 17 verse 22 So Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 talked about being strengthened with might by his spirit, by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one that strengthens your inner man with might. And your inner man is the only way you can walk in the spirit. Your inner man is the only way you can please God. So think about this. Your inner man is the only way that you could give the father what he's been looking for. The, the only way that you could live in your purpose and fulfill the whole reason why you're breathing today. It comes out of your inner man. So look what look what it says. That it is the father, the great God, Jehovah, that grants unto you. Verse 16. To be strengthened with might, according to his riches and glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. Think about this. 
So the father has released his spirit. And the Holy Ghost is really the father coming to you and causing you to be strengthened. Strengthen, that word means to discover a built up momentum. To discover a mindset that has nothing tarnished, nothing polluted, nothing corrupted, nothing lost. Nothing tampered with, nothing robbed, nothing depleted. It's a mindset that is fully charged up without no effects of sin. Flesh, carnality. It says that you'll be strengthened. You'll be brought back into the mind of the Holy Ghost. And then it says that it's going to occur in your inner man, which is the headquarters of being born again which is the headquarters of being saved, which is the headquarters of being holy, which is the headquarters of being righteous. Ephesians 4, 23 said to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24 says, and pit on that new man created after God in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 3, 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the, the width, the length, the depth, the height. Verse 19 says to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 19, so powerful. Then verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the working of his power in us. Then we go right back. To Ephesians 3, 7, we dealing with the effectual working of his power. This is that same effectual working of his power. He's saying right here in verse 20 that you're going to be able to experience God doing exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think according to the power that's working in you. That's that effectual working of the power from the gift of the grace of God that Apostle Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7, where he says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. See, that's what's going on in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. That's what's going on in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. It says that you would know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Do you know what that means? It means that nobody can literally explain the the love of God because the love of God is more than words. The love of God is more than a theory. It's more than a conversation. It's more than a summary. It's more than a speech. It's more than a sermon. The love of God is in God's bones. The love of God is in God's spirit. The love of God is in God's meditation. He thinks about you all the time. He's in love with you. He cares about you. The love of God is more than something that he could utter with his lips and vocabulary. The love of God is a nature of God that he has towards you. That's why it passes knowledge. God's love is so powerful that he didn't send somebody, he sent himself. Imagine all the angels see God Almighty at the throne. They worship him, they fear him, they're scared of him. Yes, they're scared of him. That's what fear means. 
I know that you done listened to theologians, everybody, theologians, mediologists, uh, newsmen, new casters. I know you done listen to everybody tell you what the fear of God is. Talking about the fear of God don't mean that you fear God. Oh, that's a big lie from the pit of hell. God created everybody to fear him because once you fear him, you make wise decisions. You don't act like a fool because you know what he could do to you when you act like a fool. That's what the fear of God is about. The fear of the Lord Proverbs said is the beginning of wisdom. Why is it the beginning of wisdom? You won't allow yourself to make foolish decisions because you don't want the wrath of God to come upon you like the Bible says the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So the fear of God means I don't want your wrath. I want your blessing. I want your pleasure to be met. Imagine all the angels look at God Almighty, great God Jehovah, and they fear him. They worship him. And he decides to come. I feel the power of God going through my body. Somebody being healed on here right now. Somebody being healed right here on this line right now. Somebody here being healed right now. I feel the power of God going through my body as I'm talking. Same like I went and when I'm in that conference. Same like when I'm doing that ministerial demonstration in the conference. I feel the fire of God going through me. Because what we have to understand is that the great God Jehovah mindset, it takes over this body. It makes this body a supernatural carrier of heaven. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says, And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11 is saying that if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, that's the spirit of the father, the spirit of the great God, Jehovah. That's how power his, that's how powerful his spirit is. That Jesus' body got beaten, martyred, crucified, destroyed, bruised, and came back after three days, brand new, with the same holes in the hands and the feet. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, Romans 8, 11. If the same, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Romans 8, 11 is saying that the Holy Ghost is the one that makes your body operate the way that God made it to operate in his image and likeness. Are you catching this? Saints, 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 when we dealing with this realm, we dealing with God having all authority to live out his life in your body. Romans 8, 11 is an eye opener because it's saying that the same spirit that got Jesus' body up out the grave is the same spirit that's in you. If the same spirit that got Jesus up out the grave is in you, 